Hello to all you hip skips out there, and welcome to the jungle. Join Disney historian David Dr. Skipper Marley and art director and crooner Trevor Kelly as these former jungle skips explore the world of Disney, pop culture and theme parks. But hold on tight because just like a jungle cruise, their conversations often head deep into uncharted waters. Now, grab a seat and enjoy Expedition 32, How Not to Mermaid, The Mother Plucking Tiki Room, and special guest Shauna Marie Tice. Move it up, Skips. Hey, man, how's it going? It's going great. Good. Hello. Hello. Uh, I feel like I've forgotten how to start the podcast. I know, we don't know how to start, because usually we just start rambling. Yeah. I think we're both too cold. It's very cold. It's, I'm so sick of winter. That's all I'm going to say. I'm over it. I'm, uh... I'm done. I'm ready for it to be 100 degrees like it's supposed to be. I'll split the difference there. I'm, like, I'm happy for a, a nice crisp 80. I want to go out to the desert and get naked and just lay on a rock where it's like 100 <laughs> degrees, just like a lizard and soak up all the heat. This uh, confirms yes. many theories that are floating around on Patreon <laughs> that you're, uh, you're a lizard person. I'm a lizard person. Yeah. I am. I'm going to yeah, admit it. Yeah. <laughs> Every morning I go out in the sun and just lay there and do those little lizard push-ups to right. get the blood pumping. Yeah. Say so, hey, we got a special episode today we do you have some you have some interesting news that you've been teasing out over the past couple of podcasts very well said yeah yes and we kept teasing it out not because i'm a jerk it's because i forgot to go get follow-up information <laughs> what dr skipper didn't know was that shortly after recording he would receive absolutely wild additional information so while we hate to delay this again we're going to delay this again However, it will be one of our main topics next expedition, Shriner's Honor. Now, back to the lads. So leading into our next topic, we will be at the park soon. That's right. February 25th at 1 p.m. That's our right. Patreon uh, Shriner exclusive live stream event. 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific, Pacific time. Yeah. PST. Yeah. That's right. So 4 p.m. for you wonderful people on the East Coast. That's right. So it'll be nice. Nice late afternoon yeah. trip through the park. I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait. We're going to do a grand circle tour of the park. We're nice. going to reminisce. Dave's really smart. Uh, he's going to tell you interesting things. That's the rumor. I'm just going to be an idiot wandering through the park. I'm actually more excited about what you said you're going to do. Oh, yeah, that's right. I am, I am going to show you it? through my uh, senior art director perspective. Uh, some of the interesting things and also some of the signage that just drives me up the wall every time I walk by it. So we'll see those. I'm excited to see it because you see things in signs that I don't. <laughs> There's plenty to see that bothers me. Yeah. Especially I can't wait to take you through the uh, tropical hideaway. Really? <laughs> it's, okay. It's a nightmare. Okay. And <laughs> I've already been making a list of stuff I want to share and I'm going to share new stuff, stuff that you, it's not in books. It's not, yeah, public. Oh, I can't knowledge. wait. So it'll be, it'll be a blast. So yeah, sign up on our Patreon, the Shriner level. You get that. You get a exclusive Shriner pin, all sorts of goodies. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, it's going to be great. Speaking of a good time, we've talked about having a guest for a very long time on the we, show. We have. Yes. And you were wisely said, let's hang, like, like, let's hold off on that until we get a good rhythm going. I'm afraid of people. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> and so we finally have pulled the trigger. Yeah. We're going to bring in guests infrequently so just a couple times a year so we try to be very selective on who we're getting and people that aren't doing every podcast ever. yeah she was hired at the age of 18 for the entertainment art department at disneyland 18 That's they crazy. hired her to have like a real job <laughs> a big it, kid job yep she was making like triple what i was making driving boats <laughs> in the jungle uh where she worked on parades like mulan and hercules and all kinds of amazing things. She also was part of the very first It's a Small World holiday overlay. She's been part of a, a parade that only lasted weeks that <laughs> we're going to hear about. That's yeah. right. And also was part of the fantastic refurbishment of the Enchanted Tiki Room. So all of our wonderful listeners, all of our hip skips and Shriners, here she is in the jungle with us. I'm happy to bring our very first guest. Shauna Marie Tice, the Pleated Peacock. I guess a good place to start is the beginning, yeah. right? There's one bit, after reading your bio, there's one bit of crossover between us, and then we veer wildly apart. Oh. Uh, I, too, worked at the park when I was 18. Yes. And you started right out the gate yes. at 18. So you graduate high school and you go right into it? Actually, there was a little bit of something that was happening my junior year. Mm -hmm. For my entire late adolescence, I was convinced that I was going to be a Disney animator. Oh, wow. Because that was kind of like, you know, in the 90s, that's like the penultimate 
Yeah. You're going to be, if you want to be a Disney artist, you want to be known. Yeah. You're going to be an animator. Not really thinking of the rest of the purview of Disney art. And this is like the peak uh, Lion of the, King. Of the, your yeah. favorite. Well, like yeah. Beauty and the Beast and Little yes. Mermaid, all those great. It was their gold, their second golden age. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My brother, yeah. he worked for Laughter Publications and they were a magazine that actually started the Mouse Club that would turned into the Disneyana Club. Oh, wow. Which turned into, I think, D23 oh, wow. now, right? So in the early 90s, he was tasked to go interview the nine old men who were still around. And in turn, they had these little mini conventions that were held at the Pan Pacific Hotel, oh, wow. uh, which is now Pixar Place. Yeah. And I mean, like you would have people like Mark Davis and Alice Davis, and he had Ward Kimball. And he was in charge of the animators if they wanted to talk about anything. And then I got to just sit with him. Oh, cool. So as a young 10, 11, 12 year old, I would bring my sketchbook and I would actually have them mentoring me. Oh, well, you know, you could, <laughs> like you you could do. do this. Like, like you do. do. You know, I mean, it was, you know, true serendipity. Looking back on it now, yeah. you know, going through my sketchbooks, I have like Mark Davis's signature next to my really terrible drawings of dinosaurs or in, or in fairies and things. But like, no, but like, hey, keep at it, kid. No, you got something. And what was really cool is like Tony Bancroft, Mike Surrey. Okay. They did Timon and Pumbaa, respectively. Oh. And they were still very young, and but they were given uh, the job of being supervising animators for those two characters for Lion King, and it gave them a platform to talk about the movie. So they did all these um, conventions as well. So my brother was in charge of them, and they totally latched on to me. They're like, you know, we're gonna help you out, kid. We're gonna keep in contact with you. And then I was about 15, 16. They helped me do the CalArts animation program for the summer thing. I did my portfolio review at the end of the year, as you do, to get early entry. Is that how you kind of like audition to get into? Yeah, the, okay. you have to. So you had a bunch of old dudes mm -hmm. going through your going through your portfolio, wow. telling you this is trash, this is trash. <laughs> but you know, but that's God. really good. So maybe do more of that. But you know what? You could really use like another four years of school. It's like, well, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, seven, I'm 17. I mean, I'm kind of, that's why I'm here, right? You seem a little young. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, sorry, I'm not the How black. many movies I'm have you worked the, on? No, for real. I feel like I'm not the, I know, it's like, you can imagine, like, now, of course it's a totally different. You've got right? the immediate, your fingertips, but, you know. Uh, now I heard it's a fight to the death with pool cues. That's yes. true. That's how you get into Cal Arts. Uh, yeah. Somebody dressed as Walt Disney breaks a pool mm -hmm. cue, yep. throws it in a room, and says to the. Oh, to I say the it's a giant pencil, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> giant cartoon mm -hmm. style That's pencil. Right. They just go erase. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, but oh, uh, but yeah, I kind of lost the sparkle uh -huh. of it, and um, so then kind of kismet took over. I did this thing called the Disney Creativity Challenge. It was an open oh, yeah. art, art. I've heard of that. Yes. And I've had um, students that have done that. Yes. And you yeah. submit yeah. your work through whatever media. And yeah. I did uh, pencil and I won for pencil. And um, it was a torturous process just doing the whole thing because it was huge. But I'm really happy that I won. And the proctor who ran the contest was Kevin Kidney. Oh, really? Oh, no way. Yes. So, <laughs> how crazy. And he was clearly young. This is 95. Yeah. Okay. So, he was a young, he was still a young guy. He was like seven. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I believe, I believe, yeah. He was one of the ones who was doing things at a young age. Yeah. You know? But he's like, okay, well, what do you want to do? What do you, what's your goal? I says, well, I wanted to be a Disney animator. I don't think it's going to happen, but I still want to be a Disney artist. And he's like, well, you know, there's other things you can do that have nothing to do with animation including what I do at the parks. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and so he talked about, you know, parade floats and, and all that kind of design work that just is a necessary part of the entire Disney world. And mm -hmm. I just, he blew my mind. And so I, I kind of changed the trajectory of what I was going to do. I, d I decided that I wasn't going to go to college right after graduation. Mm. And so what's really funny is my dad found a classified ad in the newspaper for Disneyland's entertainment art. And I called the number. No way. I got an interview that week. And 
they're like, yeah, you know, uh, just bring down whatever you have in your portfolio. And at Rosary, I had also designed all of like the class t-shirts and like the sports t-shirts and all those kinds of things too. So I just had pictures of all that kind of stuff. And, and then my CalArts portfolio. And he went, oh, this is all great. Awesome. Can you lift more than 40 pounds? <laughs> and, oh no and i'm like well yes he's like okay well see that palm tree over there can you just pick it up and drag it and i went yeah i think so and so i <laughs> i picked it up and i dragged it 10 feet to the other side of the interview space and he's like okay good you're hired like, okay, yeah <laughs> and i'm like oh he's like well you know a lot of this a lot of this job is very physical yes it's very artistic but um you know, these crew artisans need to know how to do everything. Oh. And so, like, we're the ones who went in and, like, we do the movie premiere stuff. Oh. So it was very physical, but it was also very super creative. Yeah. And that kind of just opened up all of these crazy doors doing these insane projects wow. that the 90s were kind of, like, the golden age of, like, you know, let's, let's throw money at it and, and let's do it. it. Yeah. Let's just sink $10 million into a horrible parade that will run for two weeks and no one will ever talk about it ever again. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to get onto this. Oh so yeah. Let's okay. not get ahead of okay, ourselves. Okay, let's not okay. get ahead of ourselves. So okay. this, yeah. So I started literally a month after graduation. Wow. And um, I was with stunning. Entertainment Art for five years. Yeah, it was amazing. So to summarize, yes. uh, for our listeners, yes. Um, Trevor and I applied at Disneyland, yes. and we were immediately sent to the jungle. Yes. Uh, you apply, and we're immediately sent to a high-quality career <laughs> job. That's true. Just just, uh, just, just pointing that out. Although, but, to be fair, uh, I couldn't uh, lift a palm tree at the time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you couldn't lift 40 pounds? I cannot. Uh, my money's still my money, can't. My money's yeah. on still can't, yeah. My money's on, on still no. <laughs> You just had to lift the gun, right? Uh, I, was I, that it? Was that I, only the heavy lifting? I was there in the period where we didn't even have, didn't guns. have guns. Really? Didn't yeah. have guns? No. Aww. Yeah, oh, I would goodness. just hold my hand like a gun and make noises. Pew, pew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy! Oh my gosh! Was so he, yeah, and I never would have run into anybody on stage. Yeah, you were. Were you over like I, there's that warehouse over on? Uh, yeah. Harbor so or? in '96, I think '96 to 2001, it was on Olive Street. Mm. And now it's houses. And uh, it's crazy. Um, but we had a big warehouse there. And we would produce a lot of the work there and then bring it over. At the time, we we did the holiday decor for the hotels and for most of the park. Oh, fun. And um, so we were, like, making, like, really gnarly stuff for the hotels. Like, everything was super thematic. Because the hotel still had the marina. Yeah. It had all the yeah. old stuff. So I was making things for the Lost Bar. Oh, fun. Oh, no shipwrecked. And it was so much fun. A lot of long hours, but then yes, I did get to do the parade, and the um, the Christmas parade, the Christmas parade for sure. So I did like Hercules, oh. Milan. Uh, I'll tell you yeah. what, I was just telling Jess the other day, mm -hmm. the Milan parade, one Mil of my favorite parades Disneyland's yes. ever done. It was wow. so beautiful and so detailed, and all of the puns were hilarious. Yeah, I, <laughs> I did um, loud bangs, fireworks cart. Yeah, so I was making like little lanterns and things and firecrackers and stuff on it. Uh, yeah, I did a lot of props. Now, when yeah. when you did these, you're you're sculpting them yourself and everything. What like so, what? How does this work? You have like the way that entertainment was set up is that you had like all of your mold makers were in a room. Okay, and then you had all of your seamstresses in another part of the warehouse, and then you had like all the grunts, and the grunts were, were like me. Were like, hey, can you go paint this or can you glue this together? Or can you make 2,000 bows for Small World? <laughs> oh I'm like, okay, wow. sure. Um, what was the weirdest grunt request that you got? Uh, we did this event down at the studios, and we built an Aladdin sand, sand dune. At the Ginotri. Yeah. Do you remember that? Uh, Deb was a choreographer for it. Yes. Yeah. And I think it was for a release for the for like the VHS for or, the, or the DVD. The return of... The one that, the, where... The second one or the one where the Robin one, Williams where came Robin back? Where Robin Williams came back. Okay. Yeah. I don't remember. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, it was for the third, the third Aladdin. <laughs> I just movie, remember I that our shift was at ten, so by the time we got down there, it was like close to midnight, and we emptied out all of these trucks and bags of sand. And we were building this sand dune, and every event that was coordinated by Entertainment Art had a designer. Okay. So the designer was in charge of designing the event, you know, coordinating the crew and what goes into it. So this one gentleman came out. I can't remember his name. I wish I did. Bob Iger. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's we'll say it was Bob. Okay. So Bob comes out and he goes, you know what? This looks amazing. 
but it needs to be six inches this way. No. Oh. Yes. No. Yes. So for the next two hours, we had to like shovel sand and <laughs> shovel and shovel and shovel like right before the event's happening because it has to like settle because the like literally yeah. dust settling. Yeah. So they could put all the props and things on the stage and everything around it. What a monster. Are you kidding? Because I'm like, once you set up the event, you go somewhere for the four or five hours that the event is happening. You're not allowed to go home. Oh. But, oh, man, I'll never forget that friggin' sand. I was so mad. We were so, we had sand everywhere. It was in our shoes. It was like, it was worse. It was worse than the beach. <laughs> Have you ever talked to Deb about it? No. You guys could talk about oh it. Oh, my she, gosh. She was a choreographer for the, the magic carpets. Uh, and the yeah. choreographer came and was like, well, here's the choreography for the parade. And she goes, oh, well, we're, I'm doing something separate. He's like, this is the choreography. <gasps> and, and she's like, great. We're doing something separate because yeah. <laughs> these are carpets. They're not, yes. they're not doing kicks and things like these are magic <laughs> carpets. So mm-hmm. she goes, they were just instantly hated me because oh. she was brought in specifically to do unique choreography sure. separate from the rest of the parade. <laughs> yeah. And then she stabbed a guy, but that's a little, well, <laughs> that's different. That's story. for another podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you so, know. so going from, from mm-hmm. grunt level, how yeah. do you, how do you level up over uh, in the You arc? level up by tenacity. Okay. And being a squeaky wheel. Um, I was, at the time when I was hired, I was the youngest person by like five years. Oh, wow. I wanted to do those fun projects. I wanted to put myself out there, make myself available to these designers who Mm -hmm. um, need something special. I think a lot of it was just saying, like to Kevin Kidney, oh, I want to be on that project. Can I, I'd I'd love to do that. Can you put me on that crew? And that's how I got to do Small World. Wow. He grabbed me and a good crew of like 10 people. And we painted all the causeway wreaths with the different countries on them okay. and all of the different holiday layered stuff and oh so then, small world holiday yes got it got yeah, it yeah yeah wow and um was this like see, the first time it showed the up first time it ever was a thing small world was built uh prior it was built really? in the 60s yeah. so this is a update yeah, 1960s. It, yeah it was yeah, it's, it's, it was an older attraction i, yeah. I think uh Before it'd be we much more terrifying if somebody came up with that attraction nowadays oh yes there, there'd be a police file on that. <laughs> I want a lot of kids yeah. in a room. Just a lot, thousands of dolls. Thousands of dolls and children. <laughs> Wait, do you hear about the last room? They're all in white. They're all, all in white. Are they like, dead? I don't know. Like a, is like, it heaven? We don't know. It's heaven or a Mormon wedding. No one knows. <laughs> They're all child brides. It's, it's beautiful. Like, it's like Midsommar, but dolls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, she's there with the geese. She's there. Yeah. She's with the geese. Yeah. yeah. So the oh very God. first time Small World Holiday shows yes, up. Yes, 1997. They, oh, my Lord. And that was where the 2000 bows come in. Okay. Uh, yeah, we had this the most gnarly, crinkly, mylar gold ribbon that they gave us. And we we ran these long clotheslines of rope across the the aisles. And we had to fill them up by the end of the week. Oh, my God. And that was our wow. quota. Because everything had a bow on it. The hours were crazy. Like, it was the time before, the land before time of overtime. Oh. <laughs> and, and you know, this whole idea that workers have lives outside of yeah. <laughs> their shifts. They just abused everybody oh who God. felt like, who they felt like just could, you know, you could use a few more hours. You know, I really yeah. need, I really need like a hundred more of these reads made wow. by Thursday. And it's Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I love doing small work. I thought it was, you know, at the time we had a floral um, lead designer. Okay. And her name was Sarah. And she was so talented. And I think they got a little scared of it towards the end because she really wanted, like, all of those country reads. Yeah. Every single one of them was full of things from those countries. Oh, that's like so, we would wow. sit so and cool. make things and, and procure things and find things from like Olvera Street. And we'd order things from Africa just to have in these wreaths. And I think the higher ups didn't like that it was a little too messy. It was and authentic. It was, it was too authentic. <laughs> it was not homogenized enough. That's right. And oh, yeah. palatable for the normals. Oh. And... Over the years, you can kind of see, like, you know, here it's been, you know, 30 years mm-hmm. of, of Small World that things have really streamlined down. It's just now more of a color story, oh. not more of an object story. How, and, yeah. When you go on it, like, every year, do you notice, like, all right, well, they took that out finally, or that's Absolutely. gone now? You know, there's things that have broken, you know, but then there's things I see that they've added. 
Like, I love that they have really added to the countries that make more sense with our personal demographic here in California. Like, Mexico has doubled in size. I remember the first year we did it, I don't think we had half of what was in there. Wow. Really? Yeah. And it's gotten so much better, so much more beautiful. There's so many more things to do. And the Polynesian section's gotten better and bigger, too. Because uh, we just had, like, the reindeer nice. and, like, some garlands. Well, now, you know, with the addition of the... Um, the film characters in it, it's its added mm. more things that just keep it fresh. That's cool. Yeah. That's so cool. I mean, oh. I wish they had taken out like the those janky old trapeze kids, you know, above <laughs> above England that, oh, that yeah, barely yeah. move anymore. But those are, <laughs> but the thing is, those are original pieces. I stare at those every time. I know. They're, they're hypnotic so cool. to me. They're hypnotic. Don't ruin like... my childhood. I need those. <laughs> I know. No, no. I have, I have so little. I think, you know. <laughs> I, I, I believe, you know, trust me, Kim Irvine loves those to pieces. Good. And I don't think for as long as she's around, those aren't going anywhere. God bless Kim Irvine. God bless her. Unless somebody on acid takes him down. Yes. Some naked man on acid. Well, yeah. he, couldn't, would he couldn't reach him this time. That guy got up there that quick. Guy got pretty, I mean, it I, would take three or four naked men standing on top of each other to reach it because yeah. it was so high up. There's yeah. a Christmas scene right there. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what day of Christmas is the four naked men on top of each other? <laughs> I think that's, I've never listened to the whole song. I'm okay. assuming it's towards the end. Yeah, yeah. 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 The Lord's a leaping. <laughs> that's yeah. right. The Lord's, Lord's a lifting. <laughs> Lord's a, yeah. Yes. Naked Lord's a leaping. <laughs> Did you <laughs> did you ever get to like uh, go into the parks when they were like setting it up like uh, after hours and whatnot? So that was actually my shift. Oh so really? My, so the majority of my shifts were third shifts. Oh wow! Tell everybody what a third shift. Third was. shift is anything between 10 p.m. and a 4 a.m. start. Okay. <laughs> Just because you want to go and do things before the park opens, you yep. don't want to be driving down Main Street and here comes you know. Grandma yep. and you know a couple kids. Yeah, so a lot of what we did, I never even interacted with guests. And one of the coolest things I did though, and I get gaslit into being told that it never happened, but it did happen. What? My second year, I'm. This I got to work ha- this on. Never this never <laughs> Damn it. This will be edited out. I know. Okay, I've, you, you can happened. totally edit this out. I've been paid to tell you. You can. Never you, can, you, can <laughs> you can put an asterisk right here. Okay. <laughs> there was some anniversary going on. I honestly don't remember what it was, but I was helping out the florals and they were doing a podium in front of the castle. Like they do, like, you know how like, you know, they have, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know, one of the dudes come out and they talk and, and it was like six in the morning and I'm exhausted because we had been there since like two working on stuff and everybody left me and I was tasked to finish this podium and I feel somebody behind me as I'm finishing up and I look up and it's an older man and he goes, you know, that looks really good. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, is that? It's Roy Disney. What? Oh, no way. And I'm like, I know that was him because he was wearing like his blue sweater that he always wore. Yeah. You know, his little dicky underneath and, and khaki pants. And he's like, oh, keep up the good work. And I'm like, what? And I just, so I literally like I'm finishing and he turns and like all of the escort people and security people. You know, because he was the one, I guess, who was talking in front of the podium. Oh, so he was there doing his rehearsal. Yeah, and oh, I was cool. just the the grunt, just finishing up. But it like it kind of shook me. You know, I'm like, it was so mundane. It was so such a simple remark. You know, I could have been anybody. Yeah, but it reverberated with me for so long, and I told everybody about. It. I'm like, yeah. You're so foolish. That never fucking happened. That didn't. He wasn't there. He's been dead for ten years. I'm like, what are you? What are you talking about? The other Roy Disney. Yeah. yeah, he had a son. There's yes. two. The, okay. This is the nephew. But take this though. If yes. You, if you his were... son. I'm gonna say his clone. His clone. Totally. Sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but take. Think about this. Mm-hmm. If if you were doing a bad job, he would have said something. 100%. Or, or, or if you were doing right? just a, a whatever job, he wouldn't have cared. I, so he must yes. have liked it. So take that as a compliment from Roy Disney. He must Maybe have liked it. because he, he saw he me from com- behind? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. No, no, no. Uh, no. no, uh, I, mean, but, no, no but, I was literally take wearing... Take compliment. I was literally wearing painter's overalls, uh-huh. like the white dickies uh-huh. with um, you know, a jacket. And you know, in my red hair. That was yeah. his thing, and in his, his autobiography. It was, it was, the, it was yeah. the white. The his the wedding Dickies photo. Yeah. His wife is in white coveralls. That's right. In their you wedding. You know what? It makes so much. <laughs> 1926. Sense now. Yeah. Oh wait, so that's the sense. other Roy. That's right. That's yeah. the first Roy. That's how we got the Roy we know. That's the original Roy. The original Roy. Yeah. Oh, I like the original Roy. Original Extra Roy. crispy. Extra Roy. <laughs> original recipe Roy. This is that was shortly before he started the whole Save Disney thing, right? Yeah. 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 That was like yeah. the early 2000s or something, right? I think. Yeah. Late 90s. 
but like it just so. it just kind of it carried me throughout so much you know because the as you know the the more that the 90s progressed with the parks things changed very dramatically with yeah. how they spent their money and what they deemed important that was the Pressler era, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, boy. when Pressler came in. The gap, the gap year. That's right. Yeah. 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 Pressler yeah. is the the ultimate villain in my history of Disneyland class. He is the Darth Vader. He, he figure. absolutely is. He is. I was at a history conference for Disney historians, and it was Leslie Iwerks documentary, oh, yeah. The Imagineering Story, mm-hmm. and they showed a clip of it. And when these are like famous Disney legends and Disney hist- people that work mm-hmm. at, the, at the company are there. There's like 50, 60 of us in this room. And when his face comes on the screen, everybody goes, <laughs> boo! Like the whole room just boos. They didn't As boo they anybody should. else. As they should. Nobody. And so at the end, the first question, she goes, any questions? The first hand was, how did you get Paul Pressler to be interviewed? And she goes, he doesn't know everybody at Disney hates him. That's yeah. crazy. No, he he yeah. doesn't know that he's considered the low point I'm like, yeah. oh, I wrote a book where I made it very clear he's yeah. the low point. I'm going to send it to him. He thought it was for the greater good. He was too busy bankrupting the gap no, uh, to sure. know about his legacy at Disneyland. Wow. I think that if he hadn't come in when he did that parade that I worked on, they probably would have tried to rework it and maybe do something else with it. So we Instead transition of, to that? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, for, for the, the listeners that may not have ever mm. seen it or know what this is, how would you describe Light Magic? I would describe it as when you're on shrooms <laughs> and the flowers start talking to you mm-hmm. yeah. and you see their hearts beating <laughs> and their and their eyes and their mouths talking at you turn that into floats that are strictly only black light <laughs> oh. and wow. strictly only visible with the fiber optic lighting Uh so that you had to create new lighting tech that was mounted to main street that were directed (gasps) at these floats that if they did not line up perfectly on main street or throughout the hub or down small world, there'd be nothing to see because the way it was is these floats would line up. There was a giant screen in the center and it would play right. and it would play this dream sequence of like Winnie the Pooh in his really? pajamas and he's dreaming of fairies yeah. and he's dreaming of honey terrifying terrifying fairies. and these fairies had um prostheses of their on their faces of big chubby cheeks and little curved noses and big eyelashes and then they had these up lights on their faces that made them look like angler fish but, <laughs> oh God. but yeah but more terrifying because they were fairies and they would come out of the woodwork of these floats am i incorrect in remembering it got into a little river dance territory oh 100 percent. that was it the was, era it was 100 percent river dance, river dance on main street usa oh my goodness with fairies <laughs> that and, was so and, big back and then. pajamaed characters disney characters yeah even the villains were wait, like wait, in... wait wait i have a question for a friend um <laughs> uh were any of the disney princesses in their pajamas yes. and if so what did they look like the I mean, let's answer that later that's wait, wait, wait. A, my the friend only, my friend doesn't want to know right now know. the only one i remember is my jasmine. friend feels dirty all of a sudden no, no. the only princess i remember is jasmine oh in pajamas that, and they that. just and they honestly just looked like nice her outfit with long sleeves. Right. Oh, oh, that's that's you know, but pa- still a bear. Pause mitten, for edit. But still a bear. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. Nice. I, yeah. I always kind of felt bad for Light Magic because uh, it replaced the Main Street Electrical yes. Parade. So no matter oh. what, that was the intention. Oh, yeah. The intention was that they shipped all of the floats from the Main Street Electrical Parade to Florida and then to Japan. Mm-hmm. And then they sold. Remember, they used to sell off all of the light bulbs. Yeah. And they everybody could buy a light bulb. People and then they pissed. sent them. They sent them to the Smithsonian. Yeah. So now there's like lights and pieces of the floats at the Smithsonian. And now what we have is the leftover bastardizations of what we got back in return. Yeah. Because we had to bribe Tokyo to give them back to us. <laughs> they I, they actually they're like we don't want this anymore. And Florida made that new Tinkerbell float, and that's how we have that. Float. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why she looks a little methy. Yeah. Because right. she was built in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the bath She's salt. A it is. It's a little it bath, is salt. The bath salt. Bath salt, <laughs> Tinkerbell. The bath salt. And the, that's and the, better. The fried gator. Yeah. 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 <laughs> on a stick. When you were working on Light Magic, mm-hmm. did everybody go, well, what the hell is this? Yeah. Okay. I think that they just kept showing us, well, 
this is the other thing too. Maybe like Deb understands this. Okay. They kept changing the story and the choreography up until the day before it premiered. Oh, that's bad. Oh my god. So that that's means that even bad. even the filmed sequence that they showed on the screen was different the day before. So they did all of these practice runs for weeks and weeks and weeks. <laughs> And they did all of these focus groups okay. with pass holders, right? And they and cast members, and they would bring the, they'd bring them in for an evening. And go, hey, what do you think of this? And people go, what the fuck is this? <laughs> is this river dance, you know? And I'm like, no, but it's it's a parade. Like, yeah, but it's a show, not a parade. Yeah, you know. And and they wanted something that was more kid friendly because it was really scary in the beginning. It oh. was very dark. It was very like phantasmic esque where. You're okay. de- where you're defeating darkness that the fairies are helping you but that kept changing and so it ended up just being like this weird little dream sequence of characters dancing around in their pajamas and again jasmine did show her midriff she totally okay. did so, totally river dancing did. <laughs> river, probably yes. river dancing good, good. yeah I, I need to know oh that. for sure for yeah. sure what was it like working just grueling hours for mm-hmm. months on end this yeah. parade finally launches, and yeah. then like seconds later, they're like, "Never mind." Like, what was that like for everybody um, working? It felt like a personal defeat. Yeah, because they put so much pressure on us that if things weren't produced or fabricated well, it was our fault. Wow. Like the reasons that the things didn't pan out is because it didn't look good. Oh. But. It really, it's not, we're just a small part of yeah. it. You know, we're just the facade. That is in no way your, no. your fault. Right. You know, I was working like 18 hour days and um, I, at the time, you know, this is 90s money. And at the time I was making like, I think like $16 an hour. Wow. Okay. In the 90s. Well, when I, when I was working Disneyland in 96, I, I was making just under $7 an hour. Mm-hmm. So you were making bank. I was. Wow. At a yeah. talented skill. Yeah. I was given a gun and said, go tell some jokes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, monkey. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I got. That is so amazing. That's what, yeah. Kids, that's what talent and hard work will do. You know what? get paid I, money I, to do cool I things. I ended up buying my mom a little BMW stick shift. Wow. A little used, like a little mid-80s uh-huh. um, for her to drive because she had just gotten a new job and needed a car. And I didn't really need a car because I was you know, using one of dad's old cars to drive just to Disneyland. Yeah. And um, yeah, like that was a huge thing for me. Two interesting stories about my mom is that, you know, our love of Disney was because of her. Mm -hmm. And not just the fact that my dad's family is old, 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 old Orange County, that they were invited to the opening day, those type of old Orange County people. But my mom was an implant to Orange County in the 60s. And Even there's a lot too. of implants in Orange a County. A lot of implants. It's mostly implants and, in Newport Beach. <laughs> yeah. <right>. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in 1963, she was at Western High School. And in 1963, it was also when they recorded Christmas through Disneyland, which is now on Disney+. Plus. Oh, and yeah. as we were watching it, because, you know, when you got Disney+, Plus, you're going to watch all the old cool stuff. Yep. Um. We're watching it, and here comes the tree lighting ceremony, yeah. candlelight, and there she goes down the procession, oh my and gosh. she's row two, fourth kid in, with her little with her little candle singing um, for candlelight. Ceremony. Oh, that is so cool! So cool, and so then that kind of ties into her senior year. She becomes Miss Your Belinda, and then sixty six, sixty seven. They had the mermaid program where you would swim in the Olympic pool at the Disneyland Hotel. And that's how you auditioned. Really? And they asked all of the yeah. local Orange County beauty queens. Yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah. It was just one guy and he never released it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and he was in the water, but no trunks. So he just <laughs> so, stood yeah. there, just yeah. stood there with a camera. Yeah. But I think it's so cool, you know, that her and a bunch of girlfriends who were in the pageant circuit got asked to be mermaids. That's wild. And I think she said that she only ended up doing it for about a month before she got really sick because <laughs> the mermaid tails at the time were made of foam latex. And if you know anything about foam latex, it's like a giant sponge. And when you're trying to wear it in water, it just gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And you have to like literally like wring them out, you know, and Somebody a bunch of trying girls to kill the mermaids. That's why yeah. the mermaid graveyard. Exactly. The yeah. Bottom. Yeah. If you look carefully when you're on the, the Did right they have side. to swim out to that rock or so did they, they just. They would swim from 
the platform that was on the side closest to the Matterhorn and then up onto a raft in the middle portion yeah. of the lagoon. And, you know, back and forth, back and forth. I think you, you probably only had like a half hour shift, but in that time it was enough to yeah. be in the water. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. But yeah. I think they ended the program in like 1970. I don't think they did it very long. Really? They yeah, lost it was a not, lot of good women there. It was not, <laughs> right. yeah. We lost a lot of... May they all rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we had a we had a 12 clamshell salute. That's right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, uh, yeah. Uh, wh- while you're here, I do want to touch upon, you got to work on the Enchanted Tiki Room. I did. Mm-hmm. And what was that like and what, what did you do there? So, well, that was part of... So when I transferred to Resort Enhancement, okay. that changed my entire area of responsibilities entertainment art everything was very temporary okay like you know seasonal parade floats it was kind of like one and done like you if you didn't take a picture of it you didn't have proof you even did it <laughs> but going back to light magic really, yeah really quick absolutely there are remnants of it at the park still Where? still so this is the very secret little easter egg oh my so when you are on the train okay mm-hmm. and you come around from the main street station to New Orleans Station, yes. there's a little dock that has um, crates with um, some of the Mardi Gras yeah. floats. Those flowers are from Light Magic. Shut up. No way. Yeah. So those are like the only few pieces. And throughout the years, they did dismantle the floats and they had a lot of the pieces backstage, like in the cast dining areas and stuff. That's crazy. There's so that's some... really fun. So when you come around, you'll huh. see like the king... You know, the king head and everything on there. Also, I heard that um, all the fairies are third shift custodial now. <laughs> they are. Yeah. They are. They yeah, are. Um, yeah, they, they do the, the pressure washing. Yeah. <laughs> it was a yeah. bad contract. You know, it's signed. just, uh, yeah. But um, but going back to what you said, yeah. um, in 04, I was hired on Resort Enhancement. They are in charge of everything static within the park. So all of the windows and interiors of the park, the attractions of the entire resort, as well as downtown Disney and the hotels. Wow. So it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. A lot of moving parts, a lot of things to take care of. And in uh, 2004, 2005, I believe, is when they had the big rehab that the Tiki Room needed. Mm. And it was all hands on deck, of course. And props was normally in charge of that because the teams are set up between windows, props, the fit team, which they make, all of the umbrellas, all of the seat cushions, wow. all of the awnings, oh, wow. everything in the park is handmade. Everything you sit on, sit under, sit around <laughs> is made by somebody in the park. Really? Wow. Yes. That's the nothing fantastic. is made like from a factory. It's all made within the warehouse down here. So props is normally in charge of all the attractions, but they brought everybody on to help out with the rehab. And the floral team it was just one person. So we all became florists. But um, I... I'm so proud of what I did in Resort Enhancement, and I'm so proud of what we did for the Tiki Room. The refresh that it needed, it was so beautiful. When you walked in, like when it when it happened, when you yeah. started the refresh, mm-hmm. was it just in shambles? Because I don't I don't really remember. No, I really wouldn't even consider it shambles. I just think that it needed like an update. Yeah, yeah. like the rain walls were literally like blue cellophane, you yeah. know, and they changed that up and they added more lighting effects and updated some of the tech. And the birds were updated and things like that. Yeah. The feathers. All that stuff that's organic, because even though the feathers are painted, they're still real feathers. So over the years, like the bugs eat them, you uh, know, yeah. and like things and the moisture, it all just gets, you know, uh, schmangy, which is a scientific word. <laughs> is it really? Schmangy. <laughs> yes, it, really? it is. Uh, I and, believe you. But I got to do a lot of the stuff on the outside. So like um, Rongo's uh, fruit bowl, oh, you yeah. know, uh-huh. and because um, we had to replace the banana like every week. Because people want to steal the banana. Yep. Really? Because people are weirdos. And <laughs> I knew um, that at a, a, yeah. um, Snow White Scary Adventure, people yeah. would steal the apple yep. out of the out of the when the queen mm-hmm. is the evil hag. Yeah. And then I found out from a cast member who worked it. She was, yeah, we buy those from Michaels. Yeah. <laughs> They're not people steal. Wow, this is from no. Disneyland. It's like, yeah, we bought a box from it, Michaels. Yeah. We have a box in the back when people steal them. That's why they moved her farther back so guests can't reach her yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's more cost effective to buy wholesale like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> people are like, look what I got. I'm going to sell it on eBay for $9 million. No, for real. Yeah. Yeah. So when you go in uh, mm-hmm. to, to refresh the Tiki Room, yes. because obviously people are fanatic about the Tiki yeah. Room, are you just trying to do a one-to-one replace or are you, are you livening things up? Yes and yes. Okay. So, like, let's let's talk about like um, just walking into the lanai. 
the lanai needed a major rehab mm -hmm. um over the years you know oh, yeah. everything from the floor the planters got remade the tapa cloth was terribly old that, those were old oceanic arts tapa cloth that they had procured years ago and um, they ended up sublimating and making new ones. And oh. um, the fit team, they sewed them and made new ones that were sublimated designs so that that way you can actually change things out quicker. So oh. then, you know, by updating the technology, you now have like a base for refreshment, which doesn't look like it's getting faded. You just go ahead and do it. All of the gods that were sculpted from the 60s were basically the same they were but remember they had the rainbow tiki painted on them like in the late 90s early 2000s they were very um yeah rainbow bright. tiki yeah, very bright yeah. and in that 0405 um rehab they toned the palette down mm. like so pele went back to being one color so it was yeah. more like the original yes, color palette. the original roly yeah. crump those that color palette which makes a hell of a lot more sense and then you move into the tiki room itself. When you look at all the birds, almost all of them had to be replaced. Really? Some of them, like over the years, like those servos wear out. Because the old style of servo, you have to put graphite into the gears oh. to keep them from squeaking and to keep them and just to keep them moving. Well, over the years, the graphite makes like a pool of dust underneath them or inside of them too, mm -hmm. and it makes them very dirty. And everything got a nice refresh. Everything got um, new feathers and new paint job, new perches made. All of the little cages and perches were all new, made brand new. Wow. The marabou around the the glee club coming down, those were feather boas from, what is that feather place in Hollywood? Mother Pluckers. Mother Pluckers <laughs> why, in Hollywood. Why are you pointing at me like I would no, know? No, no. Yeah, you, Dave. Yes. You, Dave, when you I have I mean, your, I knew the answer, but I'm not going to... When you do your... <laughs> when you do I don't your, know how you knew I knew. When you do your right stuff fan dance. That's right. That's, that's you know, right. that's where you got them. I shake my moneymaker. Yes. <laughs> and, see, now everybody needs to know the Enchanted Tiki Room sponsored by Mother Pluckers. Yes. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. Oh, that's man. That's fantastic. What's cool is that they had all of the plans and, and schematics from Harriet Burns. So mm -hmm. WDI had all of those, oh, um, cool. all of those pieces left over in archive. Parkside, there is a WDI trailer uh -huh. that is full of archival stuff. So if you ever need to like find, you know, the old color match for something or how something was made, you can literally just find it right there. Wow. So that was really helpful for replacing things so that you weren't going off color because clearly every character has its own color. Mm -hmm. The four main boys are a very strict color palette. You know, do not add pheasant feathers to Fritz's bottom because people will come after you, you know. Um, that goes uh, for all Fritz. I mean, it, it goes for all really. Fritz's in general. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yes. yes. Well, well said. <laughs> well said. But no, I think it was a really clean redo. I don't even know, like, if people even noticed, like, the work that went into it. But almost 100% of it was redone. And that that would yeah. probably be the the hallmark of a successful refurbishment Absolutely. at Disneyland is that people aren't mad; they're Absolutely. just thrilled. I remember seeing that the the the, the girls that come down mm -hmm. from the chandelier that I was told that you could tell when they had been taken out and rehabbed because their name that was on a shell would mm -hmm. be on a bigger shell. Yeah. And so some were on big shells, some were on small shells. Yes. Well, the smaller ones hadn't been rehabbed yet. Would you say uh, not to not to lead you mm -hmm. into a new topic? Uh, would away. you say that some of the stuff that you learned uh, redoing the Tiki mm -hmm. Room informed where you're at now doing Fleet um, and Peacock? Oh, sure. Yeah. But, you know, I also have to say that the reason that I was, not to toot my horn, but I will toot it, the reason I was tasked with a lot of those things is because I already had an inherent knowledge mm -hmm. of florals, of fabrication, of um, feathers and fabric and all that stuff, too, and... I was so lucky to work in a department that utilized every single facet of what I was capable of yeah. in everywhere I worked. So having me on that type of stuff was a no brainer. And yeah. as well as everybody else who was part of it too. Everybody had a, you know, had a strength doing that kind of stuff. But I think it reawakened this love of the Polynesian. At the time, my apartment was all Hawaiian. Hmm. Every single room was a painted a different color. Everything had flowers glued on it in, in some fashion. 
And so it, everything in my life was touched by Tiki, whether it was as heavy as it is now or just a little bit here and there. So uh, being immersed in that for so long, you know, you just fall in love with it all over again. Yeah. That's what got us hooked on it. I mean, I mean, think, I mean, I was, I was, since I've been a little kid, it scared the hell out of me, but I loved it. It was amazing. The first time I ever went to go see that show as a kid, mm-hmm. uh, when it rained at the end of it, yeah. I'm like, damn it, it's raining at yeah, Disneyland me now. Too. Yeah. My whole day is ruined. I thought it was really raining and they opened the doors. I'm like, how did Disney make the rain stop? <laughs> right. It's magic. Okay, I have one serious question. Yeah. And all the time you were working on that at the mm-hmm. Tiki Room, did you ever have so much fun that the gods got angered by all you were celebrating? Every time. Oh, really? <laughs> Every time. They're yeah. just punks. They were. Let yeah. humans have something. That's I know. right. Especially when you're on a ladder. Right. You know, they like to just, you know, yeah. jerk your gherkin. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was Roy's favorite move. It was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it popped into my head. Maybe we should mm-hmm. ask the question. Anybody out there that may be listening that would love to kind of do what you do, mm-hmm. is there any advice that you would give them? Um, only do it if you really love it because it's unforgiving and you're your biggest fan most of the time because. You know, when I was working at the parks, you had so many people who were supportive, but it was very technical and almost clinical, like, oh, that looks amazing. That's exactly what we asked for. Perfect. So you did it. You achieved it. But when you're doing it now on your own, on the outside, if you don't absolutely love it and think about it and want to improve on yourself every single time you do it, don't do it because you're going, you're just going to get tired of it. You're going to go, why did I even buy that glue gun? You know, why did I spend so much on these supplies? I hate it now. But if you're not willing to fail often and improve upon it, you know, maybe do something else, yeah. you know. But I think everybody has something in them that they want to be creative. And what's so special about the Tiki community mm-hmm. is that everybody has that in them. Whether they think they do or not, they can really hone in on something special. Don't be afraid to go, maybe that wasn't for me. Maybe I'll just pay somebody else to do it yeah. instead. Yeah. That's an you important know? lesson to know. Yeah. Because it's not it's not worth toiling over if you don't have the passion for it. Yeah. And like, look at where I am now. You're doing it. I'm, I'm right. sitting You're here. Sitting here in the, the home of the jungle. The home of That's the jungle. right. Now for the most dangerous part of our show, the return to civilization. If you've enjoyed the show and want to show some support while also getting some adventurously good extras, visit patreon.com slash the jungle podcast. Also, if you could be so kind as to follow the lads on Instagram, I know they'd be thrilled. At Dr. Skipper Marley and at the dot Trevor dot Kelly. See you hip skips next time in the jungle.